The topic of this video is determining whether a relation defines a function, and specifically, we are being provided with an equation. All right, let's look at a problem. Determine whether the equation defines y as a function of x. 7x squared plus 6y squared equals 1. All right, let's go through the two steps together. They're pretty easy. Step 1, solve for y. Step 2, trying to find a real value of x that results in two or more real values for y. Okay, let's go through step one first, solve for y. Well, we see that we have an equation here, and we've got three terms, 7x squared, 6y squared, and 1. Only one of those terms has y in it. So if we want to solve for y, we need to get all terms with y on one side and all terms with no y on the other. So we're going to write 6y squared equals 1 minus 7x squared because when a term changes sides, it changes signs. Next, we're going to see if we can get rid of this 6. The 6 is multiplying by the y squared, so to get rid of it, we will divide. So then we get y squared equals 1 minus 7x squared, all divided by 6. Next, to get rid of the exponent of 2, we use the square root property from intermediate algebra, which says you can drop the 2 and any parentheses as long as you put plus or minus square root on the other side. So we get y equals plus or minus the square root of the fraction 1 minus 7x squared all divided by 6. Okay, great, we've done step one, solve for y. Now we have to do step two, find a real value for x that results in two or more real values for y. This is where we need to be thoughtful. We're going to replace x with a number and then we're going to solve for the value or values of y. So, what kind of number can we replace x with so that when we simplify the right side, we get real numbers for y? Let me give you a really good example of a number that will not do that. If you choose x equals 1, then watch what happens y would be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 7 times 1 squared all divided by 6. Following the order of operations, 1 squared is 1, 1 times 7 is 7, and 1 minus 7 is negative 6. So we would have that. Now, negative 6 divided by 6 is negative 1. And if you remember your intermediate algebra, you know that the square root of negative 1 is called i, which means we got an imaginary number as a result. Now think about the goal you're trying to achieve. You're trying to find a real value for x that results in two or more real values for y. So were we successful in our mission? No. We had a real value for x that resulted in two imaginary values for y. So we have to keep looking. Let's try another number. How about if x equals 0? Let's see what happens. Well, then y would be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 7 times 0 squared, all divided by 6. And we will once again follow order of operations, starting with 0 squared. 0 squared is 0, times 7 is 0 and 1 minus 0 is 1. So we get y equals plus or minus the square root of 1 sixth. Now, is the square root of 1 sixth a real number? The answer is yes, it is a real number. It's messy, it's an irrational number, but it is a real number. Let's put it on our calculators and get a, de a decimal approximation. So I'm using the TI30XS multi-view calculator. The first button I'm going to hit is the square root button. The square root button is in green above the x squared button. So I hit the green second button, which is a shifting button, and then the x squared key. Then I'm going to enter my 1 sixth. 1 sixth happens to be a fraction, and this multi-view calculator can draw fractions. Hit the button n over d. Then at the top of the fraction, put a 1 for the numerator and at the bottom of the fraction put a 6 for the denominator. Hit the right arrow to get outside of the fraction, hit the right arrow again to get outside of the radical, and hit enter. Now, some calculators will give you a decimal value, others will simply repeat what you entered back. So, 
if you get something that's not a decimal that you want to convert to a decimal, you just have to hit the little arrow arrow button that's shown here in the lower right corner. All right, so what I see here is that we have gotten a decimal approximation, and this radical is approximately equal to 0 0.408. So y is approximately equal to plus or minus 0 0.408. Okay, this is a real number. So I'd like to illustrate this concept by drawing just a, sh a super brief table here. So in this equation, we found that when the input was zero, there were two outputs, 0 0.408 and negative 0 0.408. So one input led us to two outputs. That is a direct violation of the definition of a function. For a relation to be a function, for each real input in the domain, there must be exactly one real output in the range. This is showing to not be the case. Therefore, this equation is not a function. Now, let's learn a shortcut. Why? What part of our algebra resulted in it not being a function? The answer? this plus or minus symbol. This plus or minus symbol is the reason why 1x gave us two y's. So the shortcut is when you're trying to determine if an equation defines y as a function of x, once the plus or minus symbol shows up, you can conclude that the answer will be not a function.